day two at M-Wave 2022. This is my last day. There is another day for M-Wave on Sunday. Unfortunately, I have to fly out Sunday, but today is day two, so I'm super excited. I'm gonna show you guys some more stuff that's going on. All right, so yesterday I was in the stereo integrity room with Youth Man. There was nobody in there, but now they're in there. They're doing some demos. And I gotta say for me, I believe the stereo integrity room stole the show, at least, at least on the bass front. Like they've got a couple 24s in there, the room is huge and it is pressurizing the room. I, I'm really enjoying what's going on with stereo, with stereo integrity. So let me go ahead and take you guys in there and show you what's going on in there. All right, so this is hallway number two for M-Wave. They've got a lot of rooms in here, guys. You got stereo integrity right here. So I'm gonna take you in there. All right, so this is the stereo integrity room. You've got a bunch of subs in here. Look at these massive beasts. I don't even know the size of these things, but some of these are like 21s, I believe 24s. Got one over here. And then over here, we've got Kyle from Life of Bliss. Let me bump my ISO up so you guys can see. Well, you got Kyle from Life of Bliss. This is his setup, so look at this massive thing that he's got in his home. He loaded up all this stuff and brought it to M-Wave. Now, I don't think that, I don't think that one right there, the brown one, brown sub is his, but this right here, you've probably seen it on his channel. So he loaded up all this stuff, brought it in. And then over here on the side, we've got some Emotiva processing, some amplifiers and stuff. So stereo integrity, you've got another sub over there. You've got this massive beast right here. Then you got some car audio stuff, stereo integrity. All right, so I've said this before and I'll say it again. For me, stereo integrity stole the show in the bass department. I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. I mean, look at those drivers just going to town. I believe they had multiple 24s in there. I think four. Someone can correct me in the comments, but that room was shaking. Like so much so that the structural integrity was, was damaged. Like there was literal sheetrock falling from the ceiling. Just absolutely amazing. Hey guys, this is Nick from Stereo Integrity. We're here at M Wave 2023. In this room right here, we've got four of our HS24 carbon fiber subwoofers playing. And we've got speakers left and right and center. And let me see, I'm trying to say and too much, guys. And, um, we got two Simison amplifiers bridged on the four 24s. We're doing a combination of movies, music, and honestly, if anyone wants to bring uh, a selection of what they want to listen to, we've got streaming audio too, so you can come here experience what we got and the best thing about our 24s is kind of against what people think about 24s they're actually a very broad bandwidth woofer and these operate from 1000 hertz all the way down to five so in this room today we've got them crossed over at 80 and on the bottom end we just play down to whatever so we've got some cool tracks doing 16 hertz and a couple of one track doing eight but the rest of it's pretty much from from 20 on up but again if you guys have anything you want to bring throw on there if you, if you like 16 hertz and 20 hertz we can do it all day every day so be sure to swing by. So about our, our HS24s, these utilize a long throw three inch voice coil. They're good for 38 millimeters each direction, linear, and peak to peak you're looking at about 60. So uh, they have, feature a carbon fiber sandwich cone. It's carbon fiber, row cell, and then Kevlar on the back. The motor structure on these drivers is 250 millimeters diameter, triple stacked, and each one of them weighs uh, roughly about 90 to 95 pounds. So. If you're looking to move them, you probably should should ask your buddies next door. And the neat thing about this 24 is the enclosure might seem might seem a, a tad big when you're looking at the specs. It's eight cubic feet. When you look at the size of the driver, it's really not. And if you want to follow me over here, this one actually is right at eight cubic feet. And it's actually real easy to move into almost any listening room. So I'm normal height, I'm 5'11". So you can see how pretty compact this is for the size of the driver. And also a neat little bit about our 24s is our big 18s that are in that far enclosure here or this one right here. 
it takes three of our big bad boy 18s to equal the output of one of our 24s. So that's another thing to consider if you want a lot of output, a lot of low end, without taking up, a, you know, having speakers all the way around your room, everywhere, then our 24s definitely deliver a huge, huge performance in a very, very small package. Hey, what's up guys? Kyle from Life of Bliss YouTube. Hey, we're in the stereo integrity room and pretty much brought my entire living room out for you guys to check out. We've got two HS24s up front, carbon fiber drivers. We've got two more on the sides of the room, so we have four total carbon fiber HS24s running. We got the 1299 LCR. We've also got some beautiful cabinets from Deep Sea Sound. Um, the HS24s on either side, and we also have some HS18s here as well. Um, we have running everything as far as the subs. We have a Symbosan D4-3000. This is one of their newer digital amps. Uh, four channel amplifier should do about 2000 watts per channel times four. Um, I think it's a little bit less than that just based on our experiences here, but not by much. It's still very, very powerful amp, very respectful. We were running all four of these yesterday and we were running into a little bit of uh, amp limitation. So we ended up bringing the FP20,000Q out as well, which is this big guy over here. So we are running each one of those amplifiers bridge. They have two subwoofers on each one of the amplifiers. So we are definitely pushing some power in here and, and making things shake. So we're having a good time. Um, come see us here at room 2211. And uh, if you're not coming to M-Wave this year, be sure to check it out next year. I'm sure we'll probably be back. But we're having a great time, and we'll hope to see you guys next year. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I'm getting you in the shot. <laughs> All right, now let's go check out Pokal. If what's in the dark will come to the light Just when you think that they are under Just wait for me Wait Hey, Laura, it's me All right, you guys know I love me some Focal. Every time I get to listen to these things, I'm just blown away. And I actually got to find out some very interesting information about Focal and the beryllium tweeters that I didn't know before and I would have never found this out if I hadn't gone to M-Wave but somebody here in this room asked the representative Tom why you know some of the Focal speakers are so expensive and he went into detail about what contributes to that and specifically the beryllium tweeters it's very interesting but enough of me talking I'm gonna let the rep Tom explain it to you. But I'm interested in what you guys think about Focal. I know there's a lot of Focal people out there. If you are M Wave and you were in this room, let me know what your thoughts were about these speakers. Hey guys, I'm Tom Graham. I'm with Focal Name America, product specialist and trainer. Uh, we're here at M Wave 2023, uh, showing off one of our classic systems that we have here. So this is a pair of Sopra number threes, uh, the biggest of the bunch. There's a number two book, um, I'm sorry, number two floor stander. Uh, as well as a number one bookshelf, but in such a large space, we decided on the uh, number threes. Uh, we were talking earlier, and uh, I think that it's interesting you know, that a lot of folks don't realize one of the things, obviously, that makes Focal special is the pure beryllium tweeter. Uh, and beryllium is a remarkable uh, material. It's number four on the periodic table. It's very lightweight, very rigid. Those are the things that give it its uh, characteristics that we like when it comes to uh, you know, a tweeter. Uh, but it's also 50 times more expensive, roughly, than gold, uh, and very difficult to machine and work with. So it's a unique challenge, as well as something with unique properties that we like. Uh, so we're, uh, we're very happy to show it off. And I think that uh, beryllium tweeters are really part of what make the, the higher end Focal speakers so special. Uh, and in terms of electronics, we've got the new classic gear. This was released back in January, uh, and we have the NAP 250. This is the power amplifier. It's a stereo power amp, 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms, which is what the, the Focal speakers are, uh, as well as the NSC 222. 
This is an analog preamplifier with a streamer built into it, uh, as well as some other cool features like a really high-end headphone amplifier, uh, phono preamp, a number of analog and digital inputs as well. So this is kind of the brains of the system, and here we have the brawn. Uh, but you can see here, one thing that's kind of cool to point out uh, are the heat sink design, right? Yeah. So on the NAP250, you know, it's generating heat, so these are uh, extruded aluminum heat sinks on either side. And you notice the same design on the 222. Now, a source preamp like this is not going to generate a lot of heat, uh, but for some kind of aesthetic commonalities, this has it as well, and these are also 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi antennae. So they're built into the unit, uh, and that's one of our patented designs over at NAME uh, that is, I think, worth pointing out. One of the cool things uh, that makes the new classic gear so special. But. And then it was time for lunch. So they didn't have any food at the convention center. I believe last year they had some food there, but this year they made the decision to you know, go without food. And there's there's Ike. He's got his own YouTube channel, Easy Home Theater Tech. But when you're running around all day on your feet, you get pretty hungry. So we decided to walk about 10 minutes down the street, literally just straight down the street from the Kansas City Convention Center. And we went to get some barbecue. So I'm from Houston, Texas, and I will proudly rep Houston barbecue. You know, Texas, Houston in particular, has some of the best barbecue in the country. So I was very curious because I've been hearing so many things about barbecue in Kansas City, how great it is. So I was interested to see how it stacks up and compares to Houston barbecue. And I got to say, it lives up to the hype. I actually had barbecue three times. I had Joe's barbecue twice when I got off the plane and then we're walking to Joe's barbecue here. I still think Houston has the best barbecue, but I will absolutely say that Kansas City is the second best that I have ever had in comparison to Houston. So Joe's Barbecue is excellent. And this is the restaurant Joe's Barbecue. The original location is at like a gas station, but we ate here and once again, the food was great. So... Good job, Kansas City, on the barbecue. All right, let's get back to the convention center. So in here, we have a seminar room. So I believe Michael said there's about 100 seats in here. So not sure what kind of seminars you're going to have going on in here, but that's the seminar room. And you all know these guys. This is SVS. So it looks like you got the... Looks like that's a PB16, and then you got some SVS speakers. I'm sorry, guys, I'm out of breath. I've been <laughs> walking around. Just came from outside. Then you've got a Lorentz receiver. So that is the Cinema 50. You've got your center channel. Y'all guys, you all know what this beast is here. So that's the SVS room. And they've got some prime elevation speakers up here. And you got some more on the sides over here. Next, let's go check out some Martin Logan speakers. All right, so this is the Martin Logan room, and they had an Anthem STR amplifier in there for the power. Now, I was a little bit disappointed, not in the speakers themselves, but every time I went in this room, they had the neoliths covered up, as you can see, right next to these speakers. I don't know what the deal was about that, but I went in there like two or three times, and they were covered up. And then the one time I saw them when they weren't covered up, the door was closed, and I tried to go in there, and it was locked. And it was after 5, which the show ended at 5 every day. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get video or audio for you guys, but hopefully next year. But what I did hear with these speakers, they sounded really, really good. 
Next up is going to be GSG Audio. Now, just to let you guys know, my gimbal was acting super goofy and I did fix it, but you know, forgive me for the shaky cam here. All right, so I'm about to take you into the experience room. So they've got some subwoofer comparisons. You got some GSG audio speakers. Let me show you guys that. So you've got these massive, massive subs, these massive drivers. Got some subs, SVS, some Martin Logan, Arndahl, Klipsch, and then you've got your other sub here. It's open so you can see the inside of it, inside of the makings. And then behind here, they're going to be doing blind speaker tests. So they've got this big Lazy Susan, and then they've got these speakers that they're going to be rotating and they're going to be doing blind speaker comparisons so nobody's going to know what speaker it is that they're showing but look at all these speakers they got over here so you've got boom arndahl have those in my theater love those svs klipsch and you got some jbl rebel polk and klipsch i'm sorry focal on the end and next up is going to be JVC with that 8K Crispy NZ9. Hi, I'm Rob Buddy, the National Project Manager for JVC. Uh, we're here at M-Wave showing our new DILA NZ9 projector, 8K laser, um, 3000 lumen projector, 100,001 native contrast. Uh, really happy to be at the show. The setup we have shown at the show here is a NZ9 on a Stuart Studio Tech 130 screen, 138 inch, 138 inch diagonal. Uh, we're showing native 8K material off the 7th Sense server, and then 4K material from the Kaleidoscape. So showing a couple clips, showing the dynamic range of the projector, and showing the possibilities of what this projector can do in your home theater. Um, JVC offers a full range of home theater projectors ranging from $34.95 all the way up to $26K. Um, actually, I have an NZ7 on sale right now for $10K. Um, so if you're really interested, uh, please contact us at jvc.com, and we'll be more than happy to get you in contact with the local dealer. Thank you. All right, so you guys that have a JVC, I am a little bit jealous because the picture on this thing just looks absolutely incredible you know 8k 8k 60 4k 120 the blacks like i saw this projector at cedia last year and i kind of forgot how good the picture looks on this thing i mean just just look at how beautiful the image is so yeah i see why people swear by jvc because it's just a, an incredible, incredible image. And again, watching this stuff on YouTube is not going to do it justice. The picture looks absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. It's crispy. It's sharp. The blacks are super punchy, super dark. I mean, just, just look at that. It almost looks like you're looking at an OLED, basically. So... Yeah, JVC once again knocks it out of the park. So this room, I believe, was the EQ comparison room. I didn't get to spend much time in there. I just kind of walked in to get some B-roll, and they were in the middle of doing some comparisons. So what they're doing is they're switching back and forth between different receivers and processors and then calling out the numbers so that the audience can remember which one it is and see which one they like. But I want to hear from you guys. If you were at M-Wave and you were in this EQ comparison room, I want to know what your thoughts were and which one you preferred. One. 
Yeah, so what they're doing is they're switching back and forth between different receiver manufacturers and basically switching the EQ, the room calibration, to see you know which one the audience likes best. Hey guys, we're here at M-Wave. Uh, I'm here with Matt from uh, Storm. Super excited to be here. And we're going to talk a little bit about the system setup here. Uh, we got a... Uh, uh, S7 series uh, uh, for listen setup. We got 7.7.4. Uh, .7 um, kind of a crazy system to set up as a demo at a show. Uh, so there's a lot of hard work that went in, into this, and we're really excited. Uh, we got a ginormous room in here, and uh, our technology is a large part of that and really helping, uh, making make sure we got even response throughout. We got the seven subwoofers. We got two flagship D215S's um, and those are in the right front and left front corners up here. We got also some uh, two D15S's up front and three across the back. And this is a large room, you'll probably get some scale from some pictures, but that's really a difficult situation. Standing waves get really low in frequency and uh, so it's pretty cool to have the ability to have bass really even response in this room. Um, of course, with the, the power of the Perlis and subwoofers, that's some, uh, some magic there. Um, we have up front S7T, our flagship speaker, our S7C flagship center. Um, we got the S4B here, our little baby. Mm. Dominus rated surround, two channel wonder and a 2.1. So it's a really great mix of, you can do two channels, you can do home theater. We got some S4S's up here around uh, up for our top level. And, uh, you know, that really sums up the system in the, in the showroom. So we got six seats in here. Um, it's a pretty cool setup, and uh, Storm's a major part of that. So I'll let Matt talk a little bit about his side. Yeah. Eric says we got the little baby here as if this doesn't weigh more than your average small child. Uh, <laughs> this is a killer, killer room. Uh, it is very large, as Eric mentioned, to put an actual numerical point on that this room is 48 feet long 28 feet wide and 15 foot 7 inches tall uh, so it is a massive space being that we have some actual visual aesthetic products as well some screen samples uh, a secondary projector for people to take a look at uh, the evo processor is also here statically on display so we chose to occupy the front two-thirds of the room that way we could pressurize things a little bit better uh, we did, you know, do our homework and, and make sure that we did some analysis and simulations beforehand to make sure that we were in a half decent starting point as any little audio engineer should. Uh, and then we came in here and set up and deployed with uh, Art, which is the third time that we've done this as a joint uh, show this year. And it's a fantastic pairing. Um, so, so from the Storm Audio side, we have a ISP Elite Mark III sitting in the rack over here behind us. Um, it is a fantastic piece. We actually just recently launched Drac uh, Live Active Room Treatment to the public in the beginning of uh, June. So it's been live for about six weeks now and available to, to Storm Audio users. It is exclusive to Storm Audio until Q4 of this year. Um, so this was a really cool setup in here and the, and the way active room treatment works really lets us to have a good presentation in here. It would be a lot more difficult to do what we're doing in here without it. Um, it's a very, very revolutionary, and I use this term a lot when I'm talking about it because it really, really is way of treating the, the base handling and base management in the room. And especially for us to be able to walk into a big room at a convention center where, you know, they've made some steps to improve the acoustics of the room, but it's not a whole lot. Uh, I did a shout test in the back of the room earlier today, and we had a solid two and a half seconds of reverberation. So for us to be able to have really high level low end bass in here and not have a ton of excessive reverberation and decay time is, is pretty impactful. Um, other than the subwoofers, we also have a Storm Audio PA16 Mark III doing the amplification. That is a 16 channel amplifier 
uh, in a three rack unit tall form factor. It's the only form factor like that in the residential market for amplification. Uh, it is a solid power hound. It's got over a 3000 watt power supply in it. Um, and we were lucky enough to actually have a few 30 amp circuits provided to us to be able to drive all of this in this room, which is really helping. Uh, so we're paired together here with Seymour Screen Excellence. We've got a, a Barco Njord CinemaScope projector, uh, as well as a Mad VR NV uh, and Row One Cedar seats. So you know, all together, this is a, a pretty wicked combination. Yep, you got sixteen thousand watts in subs alone, uh, and you know, in the systems when you add them all up together. So yeah, it's it's kind of crazy what we're doing in here. And, and literally what's really cool also is, you know, the, the amps are 200 watts a channel as well. 200 watts and 8 ohms, 225 and a 4. Um, it does have the ability to have bridged mode power, which we're not even doing. We're just running single ended for all the channels in here, and it's plenty. Uh, in fact, we had some, some precautions on the first day on our initial tuning, and yep. we decided to, to do a slight scale back uh, just so that we weren't totally over the top yeah and that's you know that's really goes to show of uh really how much energy you can put into a room with using really efficient high quality speakers and you can energize a room this size literally with 200 watts a channel uh and a lot of the speakers are uh i know our front s7ts are 600 watts so there's a lot of you know room to growth and that's why they're dominus rated um 117 db at one meter um so it's about not just getting loud, it's about the dynamics. And that's what we have in, in mu movies, right? There's 20, 30 dB peaks. You gotta have the amplifier power, but you also gotta have the clean uh, linear excursion to get there. And that's uh, really what makes it a, a unique experience. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty tremendous presentation, so. Cool? Yeah. All right, guys, well, that is gonna conclude it for this vlog for M-Wave 2023. I've had an absolute blast at this thing. It's been an incredible experience. You're not gonna find anything like this in the home theater world where you can come and do comparisons or you can come check out speakers. You can do blind tests. You can hear a per listen home theater room with just a crazy system in there. I mean, some of these rooms that have, one of the rooms has Barco. You know, we've got Mad VRs, you've got Storm Audio. It's been an absolutely fun experience. And also, I got to meet a lot of really cool people, people that are subscribers, people who aren't subscribers, and just people that have the same passion. So everybody that came up to me, everyone that came and encouraged me, told me they like my videos, I really appreciate every single view, every single comment. Thank you guys so much for the encouragement. I'm always trying to grow and provide better content. Hopefully you found value in this, in this video. If you did, please hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and you know, make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss when I post new content. So that's gonna conclude it for this vlog, M-Wave 2023. Hopefully I'll be able to come again next year. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.